basic idea of it. So you balance head losses as you go throughout the system. All right, the next thing let's look at here is let's start looking at pumps and pumping. And this is kind of what we've been looking at all, all term, really, is trying to get, get ready to analyze a pumping system. So let's have a look at that. All right, so what we're looking at here is chapter 14. So I'm on page uh, 131. Uh, I'm missing a couple pages, so it's right around 130 is that. So what, what pumps do is they move water. Now pumps take power from a motor and from it they make pressure, which we measure as head and feet and flow. So that's what a pump does. It, it um, provides pressure and flow to water. Okay. Most common type of pump is a centrifugal pump. Okay, so if you're, you've got a water system in a city, you've got centrifugal pumps that are moving water. And what they have is a spinning device called a impeller that's enclosed in a case called a volute. And so the motor uh, spins with that central shaft there that turns the impeller, that throws the water in the volute and moves it out into the pipe. That's called a centrifugal pump. Centrifugal means spinning is the idea. So there's a picture of a centrifugal pump. You're looking at the volute there. You can see the main channel for the water as it'll come around and out. So this water is going to come in, it's, it's going to get caught by that impeller and thrown to, in the volute and kind of basically thrown up through the top of the volute and out into the piping system. You can see there's a flange up there where you connect the pipe. Here's another flange for the inlet pipe and there's the motor and the shaft coming through. You need some seals in here so that shaft can spin and you won't be leaking water. So you've got some seals. Okay. So that, that's what's going on there. All right. So the impeller is shaped like that, kind of a spiral looking thing. There's two types of impellers that are commonly used, open and closed. Um, now a closed impeller has little walls on either side. It's efficient. Open impellers are less efficient. But the, why you would use them is they don't clog as much. So usually in a wastewater pump, you're going to be using an open impeller because you can have things in there that might clog the pump. Clothes would be used for, for water, clean water. Okay? So closed impellers might be up around 80, 90%, well, 80% efficient or higher. Um, open impellers may be down around 50. You really do pay the price on an open impeller, but uh, you need to have them on a wastewater pump, okay? All right. So those are impellers. There you see an open impeller. You see the cutaway of the volute there. So once again, the flow will come in this way. The water will get spun around and out. You see some of the seals over there. To, to in the bearings to kind of hold that shaft and keep the water from leaking. Okay. There's a closed impeller. So again, you see the walls on either side, a real narrow opening in there. It's much more efficient in how it directs the water, but uh, it, it'll clog quite easily. So that would be used for, uh, for clean water. So what the impeller does is spin and it throws the water outwards. Okay, that's the impeller. You can see the shape on that and it rotates. It's going to throw the water outwards. What the volute does is channel the water and give it a, a place to go. Notice that what the volute is doing is increasing in size as you work your way around. So what's going to happen here is when that impeller throws the water out, the water has what's called velocity head. But as it comes around, that, that channel starts to get bigger. 
So if you use V equals Q over A, the water's going to slow down. And so that velocity head will change into what you want, which is pressure head. Okay? So that's the idea. You get velocity head off of the impeller, and that changes into pressure head. All right. So that's what's going on. So these volutes are intentionally in a spiral shape. And the intent of that spiral is to increase the area, slow the water down so that velocity head changes into pressure head. That's the idea. And then the impeller spins and gives the water velocity head. All right, now if you're ever rebuilding a pump, um, be sure that you put the impeller in the proper direction. Notice it does not cup the water. You do not want the impeller, the, the curve in the impeller to go into the flow because the water will be cupped then. You don't want that. What you want is kind of a, a shape that bends into the flow like that so that the water will be thrown outwards, okay? And I don't know how often it's happened, but I have heard stories of doing a real nice pump rebuild at the last step, they put the impeller in the wrong direction and then they turn on their pump and not much happens and they can't figure out what the problem is, even though they've done a very good job rebuilding everything. So just remember to get the impeller in the proper direction if, if you rebuild a pump, okay? It should throw water outwards, okay? That, that's the idea, not cup the water. Okay, now the, the energy that the impeller gives to the water is caused by the rim speed of the impeller. So what you look at is how fast a point on the rim of the impeller is moving at any given instant. The faster the tip of the impeller moves, the greater the velocity and the greater the velocity head. So you can generate that two different ways. You can generate it by having a high RPM or by having a big impeller. Okay. So the rim speed is a combination of the angular speed of the impeller, which is the RPM on the pump, times the circumference of the circular path it's traveling around, basically. So RPM times 2 pi r, the circumference is 2 pi r. The RPM is the angular speed. So a small impeller spinning at a high RPM can have the same rim speed as a large impeller spinning at a lower, lower RPM. Because okay? you're looking at the circumference that it travels plus the angular speed of the impeller. Okay. Let's see here. Um, Why don't I get you um, a couple of problems here to keep doing? So why don't we look at 12.2 and 13.1. I'm sorry, now, did, did I assign 12.2 already? I don't think I did. It's a minor loss problem. So 12.2 and 13.1. Um, let's get make these do um, Wednesday. Now the one thing I'd forgotten to assign this, this could be on the test here, this, so that's minor losses. We went over one in class. We did 12-1 in class. I'll go over that on Friday too, just so you get a good look at it. But that's uh, finding a mi minor losses, okay? I'm sorry now? You said the homework is 12-2 and 13-1. Yeah. 
Like, okay. So this could be on the test, and I'll, but I'll go over it really well on Friday, so you know you can see how that was done. We did 12-1 in class also. So. On 12-2, on one of those questions, that has to do with uh, measuring time. It doesn't have anything to do with RPMs. Right. Yeah, 12-2. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's got open space, so I'm putting it in there. Okay. Uh,